Okay, so what's everybody losing their minds about today? Oh dear. It would appear that the famous anti-feminist stand-up comedian Bill Burr is facing some troubling allegations of simpery! Simp! 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 Now, if you didn't quite catch that, I'll just play that for you again and I'll talk you through what we're seeing here. So here you can see former President Donald Trump receiving a standing ovation as the camera focuses on him at a recent UFC event. There's Bill Burr, there's his wife. All seems well until Bill Burr's wife Nia spots Donald Trump, spots the camera, and all hell breaks loose. You should keep your hoe on a leash. Ooh, you're hard, showing off. Now I know what a lot of you are going to be thinking, but perhaps even screaming at, at the screen on your devices as you watch this video. You're probably thinking or saying out loud, uh, Danny, <laughs> so what? This is no big deal, right? Right? Wrong, I'm afraid. Uh, this is a big deal. But uh, I will forgive your naivete. That's just the kind of guy I am, right? I understand that you can't all be ordained gossip bitches like myself, but as you aren't, you know, official gossip bitches, you know, you just watch us, you don't understand, you don't have the esoteric knowledge that we have, you can't see how, for our 30 pieces of silver, how we will stretch this molehill out into a great mountain range. Now here's the problem for Bill Burr as I see it. He has built his stand-up career on essentially shitting on uh, what he perceives as manipulative, narcissistic, self-pitying women. It was kind of his thing. And some would say he was pretty good at it. Women are just constantly patting themselves on the back about how difficult their lives are and no one corrects them because they want to fuck them. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. But Bill Burr's comedy also had a particular focus with these narcissistic, manipulative, self-pitying women. It had a particular focus on their relationship with weak men. Oh no. John Lennon and Paul McCartney redefined Pussy Whipped. You have to watch this fucking video. It's... John Lennon is singing with Chuck Berry. And even though she has no fucking talent whatsoever, he's putting her in the fucking band just so she'll shut the up and stop nagging him because he's too much of a fucking pussy. She picks up the mic and I swear to God goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's all very well and good, Bill Burr, but um, welcome to the internet. You built your persona. Now everyone's waiting for you to slip up. One sign of weakness in your wife's presence. One instance of her overstepping the mark. And every slimeball enemy of yours is going to come crawling out of the woodwork. Every grifter, any of my fellow opportunist content creators, they're gonna come out and they're gonna say, Ah, see, you're not the man you said you were. Are what? you married? Yeah, no, she's the best. Okay. She's a saint and she puts up with me. And uh, I actually run jokes by her. Do you really? Yeah, like, should I say this? Is this gonna, you know, nowadays there's always that, should I, it's so weird now. <laughs> no, you shouldn't say stuff like that. The less people know about your personal life, the better. Because people are using that very clip now to go back and say, Look at Bill Burr, he's such a simp, isn't he? He has to run his jokes by his wife. She has to give him her seal of approval before he can bring his new material out. Oh, and look what Nia had to say about Trump and COVID. What a coincidence. It all makes sense now. Um, I got it really into vaccines <laughs> during COVID. I can't stop getting them. It's just fucking creepy to have guys like Mayor Garcetti be in charge of telling people whether or not they get to work. Like that's not what a governor's but supposed to be. That's not what a trying, mayor's supposed they're, to be. They're, but they're they're trying to look out for your best interest. Whole fucking time, there's been fucking assholes on my street walking around, no masks. You know, not quarantining like the people that come by the houses. You see the fucking, you know, the same people that were going in and out of the house who are not part of their family still going in and out of the house. You want people to walk down the street with a mask on? Let's not start this, job. Do you, though? Let's not start this. See, this is the problem with all of these comedians and, uh, and entertainers uh, spending every waking hour now on each other's podcasts. You know, they go on each other's podcasts, they tell their 17 life anecdotes in every which way with all of its contradictions and all of their, all of their slip-ups. And lurking in the shadows, unbeknownst to them, it seems, lurking in the shadows are the enemies 
from their dark pasts, and in many cases dark presents, waiting for you to say something wrong. And not even enemies. It could just be nasty grifter content creators. They're not all as honourable as me. They're not all as insistent you know, on nuance and balance. And, uh, and also, more than anything, if you're a stand-up comedian, if you're an entertainer, you're an artiste, doesn't this going on podcasts for hours and hours every week for years, doesn't that ruin a little bit of the mystique? Doesn't it take away a bit of the air of, uh, of yeah, of mystery about the person, the performer, the man, the illusion, the, uh, the, the archetype that you have created for yourself, the thing that you've come to represent, it ju it's just shattered for everybody eventually. You know, they eventually start to uh, 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 despise you. That's what's happening. Um, and I know what you're going to say. Oh yeah, Danny, you wouldn't go on uh, one of these podcasts if, if you could. Well, I know that the time is coming. The call is going to come any day now for me to head over to Austin, Texas and sit down with Joe Rogan. But I tell you what, I'm going to be uh, the most mysterious guest he's ever had. I'm going to be aloof, frankly, and uh, he, won't, he won't get any real information out of me. Look at these sweet little fucking ice creams. It's like my husband's dick. Small but sweet. <laughs> you think I'd let my wife prance around like that on Instagram. Like fuck I would! Every time my wife is getting a little out of order, a little boisterous, I just give her a little, I've said this before, I give her a little squeeze. She's sat next to me in the restaurant and we're, you know, with company and I just give her a little under the table. I hardly ever have to do it now. She's a quick learner. The only incidents we have now are sometimes when I'm filming here. She walks in with no, you know, no prior warning. I warned you never to come here. I didn't mean any harm. Do you realize what you could have done? Hey, stop. Get out. talk white women here shall we the woke movement was supposed to be about people of color not getting opportunities the at-bats that they deserve and then somehow white women swung their gucci booted feet over the fence of oppression and stuck themselves at the front of the line i've never heard so much complaining in my life from white women my name is so with my suv and my heated seat oh i know white women eh and those Poor black ladies, they're such inconspicuous wallflowers, aren't they? And this is uh, part of the problem as well now, because you've got some really nasty, racist uh, people with an axe to grind with Bill Burr coming out of the woodwork now, like uh, comedian Anthony Cumia. I certainly learned what an overbearing piece of shit this woman was years ago when she made Bill cut all ties with me. Don't be fooled by this tough guy persona. This woman runs every aspect of his life. Notice how his comedy has changed since he's been with her? Now, Nia may or may not be an overbearing piece of shit, but uh, cutting all ties with Anthony Cumia, or Count Cumia as he's known in some circles for his penchant for biting girlfriends, that is certainly not something I'm going to hold against Nia. Political commentators like Mike Cernovich saying that Bill Burr's bits about henpecked men are not bits at all, but in fact, spoken word cries for help. Monica Crowley describes Bill Burr's wife as a toxic, woke nightmare and Bill Burr's life as a living hell. But by no means should you assume that this is all one-sided. You've got all the crazies on the other end of the spectrum as well. Shout out to actress, writer and producer Nia Hell, married to comedian Bill Burr. Trumpers. Your misogyny, racism, and hypocrisy are showing. Naya has been fucking awesome for, since 2012. She's the best. Nia is the reason why Bill Burr is, is awesome. So, the moment you've all been waiting for my verdict and the final verdict, I think, for, for anyone who's listening, because clearly I'm the only one bringing any kind of balance or fairness to this. Um... Surely you've noticed that the people attacking Bill Burr and Nia, and the people defending Bill Burr and Nia, uh, they're not really attacking or defending Bill Burr and Nia, are they? No, they're not, Danny, you're right. They are furthering their own agendas. It's political, or it's personal, with uh, Bill Burr, you know, and Anthony Cumia, who, who hates Bill Burr now. Uh, it's not 
they're not really talking about the incident in itself. Well, the incident was uh, her rodding uh, Donald Trump, which, you know, a bit immature or anything, right? Nothing more. Is Bill Burr a little simp? I don't know. I'm sure he's modified some of his behaviour since he's got married and had two kids, but I don't really care. There is something to be said about, you know, not talking too much about your private life on all these podcasts. It does shatter the illusion a bit. And of course, you know, people are there waiting to pounce on your bill. All right. Uh, heed my advice, uh, Bill. All right. I've been in this industry 12 months at least. And uh, you need to stay a little bit more aloof. Right. I want to reveal too much. You want to? I, I'm. You just want to be like me. Blow Joe Rogan off. Anyway, uh, there is one opinion uh, which we haven't looked at about this whole matter, and I think it's the most eloquently put. And this last opinion comes from a big fan of the Daniel Boland show. Mike David from Red Bar Radio. Who's Daniel Boland? Oh, oh boy. Hello, everybody. It's me, Billy Boy. Yeah, make some noise, okay? Oh, my God. It's my wife. What are you doing here? Bill. Why are you talking about Colonel Colin? Why are you talking about that? <laughs> there you go. There's, uh, that's, that's your ending. Like, share and subscribe if you haven't already, you bloody lunatics. I'll see you in the next one.